Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Andrea Craig, and today I'm going to talk to you about project-based learning, chapters three through five. Chapter three is imagining the possibilities, and they compare it to packing for a trip and how you imagine all but possibilities and conditions of your trip and what you need to pack. Same goes in with making your project. You want to pack for your project and just imagine all the outcomes of learning and things that could happen with your project. So what is important? Identifying the big idea. Good projects connect directly to the students' frames of reference, interests, and experiences. Textbooks become a reference book rich with illustrations and supplying information. So this is important because you want the kids to really feel like they can connect with the project so it's easier for them to comprehend and to be more successful. What is the big idea? You want to scan the table of contents of your teaching guides and review the curriculum standards and ask yourself, what is this all adding up to? Chapter three also brings up wikis. It is useful for planning and managing a project, whether you work alone or in a group, locally or apart. The ease of this is it's really easy to get to and makes um, your project helpful, a helpful tool for organizing and thinking and tracking your actions. It also talks about planning for a rigor and digital age skills. It talks about analyze, evaluate, and create. When making your project, you want to analyze it, examine, explain, investigate, and characterize what you're looking for. And then you want to evaluate your, your project plan. Evaluate means to judge, select, and decide, and justify if it's good for what you're trying to teach in the moment. And then creating your plan. You want to Anticipate what might happen, adapt, and combine different models together. And while doing this, make sure you keep the students in mind. Imagine the project from the student's point of view. Why should they care? What would spark the student's curiosity? And why is it interesting and important? When you're keeping the students in mind, the projects will be more successful because it will be on a level that the students could understand. Now, essential learning tool essential learning with the digital tools and the web. Research. Research is deep learning with the experts, original work, and raw data. Make the ideas visible, express them creatively. Bring the ideas into the open allows us to talk about and make meaningful decisions on the project's idea. Collaboration. Projects should invite collaboration and tools and sources to help the children learn together. Project management. Project management should have all the tools and support that the students need to get through their project. Reflection. Reflection is good so the students can reflect on their work and work together to make it better and keep improving each time. And supported study is just extra outside sources if a group gets stuck on a project that can help them maneuver through and just keep going. Chapter four, strategies for discovery. Just discovering, op observation, what's on the world around them, what's going on, type of thing. Reviewing projects and pitfalls. So if you're purchasing a ready-made project plan, be selective. You don't wanna just go out and just buy any plan because some of them don't fit with the students that you have. And if you're going to make your own project, review other plans first and just get ideas from different plans and. Just combine things together and see what works for your students and what don't, what doesn't. Pitfalls to look for. Long on activity, short learning outcomes. This means you can learn as much through a brief lecture or by reading about the topic and the project falls short because there's not much going on and it's, there's not a lot of information. Um, technology layered over traditional practice. Having students research a topic and then just doing it Doing like a PowerPoint or a slideshow on the internet isn't really a useful project because you're not really engaging everyone, getting them to think and things like that. And then you also want to make sure the project you have, the idea isn't too broad and the work should be interdisciplinary and collaborative and rigorous. So the kids really have something to work on and they stay focused and it's to the point. You don't want anything overly scripted with too many steps. Um, this could be really complicated and the kids don't know where to start, where to end, and would need a lot of help. 
Um, not a lot of focus on the formative assessment. So you need to make sure the assessment happens early and often in project-based learning so they know exactly what they're looking for and exactly what they need to do. And the assessment does not feel authentic. Make sure the work is real. They have something that they really need to work on and they have an audience to actually show their efforts to so they feel like this is a genuine thing that they have to care about and you're not just giving them busy work. Designing your project. When you design your project, revisit the framework. Make a final list of learning objectives for the core subjects and the disciplines. Decide on the skills you want to address. Also, make sure you identify the learning dis dispositions you want to foster and establish evidence and understanding, plan the theme or the challenge, and plan the entree into the project and experience. So when you're designing the project, just make sure you keep everything in mind from the discipline to the framework and the skills and that they're all adding up and they all align with one another and you're not off putting something and confusing the project. Chapter five, making assessments meaningful. With project-based learning, this is really important. You want personalized learning. When project-based learning is truly open-ended, each student or team approaches the learning experience in a unique way that they can get on their own type of learning. During the project, students go through a lot of activities, questioning, investigating, making sense of what they discover, asking more questions, and doing more research until they emerge with a new understanding, which is great. When you do this correctly, it should just open the child's mind to different questions and ideas and get the spark going. Authentic assessments and project-based learning, taking advantage of the assessment opportunities throughout the project cycle, you help students so you help students learn a great deal more if you leave the assessment to the end. Assessing along the way formative assessments lets you tap into the student's thinking so you can adjust the project, address misunderstandings, or guide efforts in new directions. So if they're getting stuck, you have a way to maneuver through that and help them get through the project and they have more understanding what's going on. At the end of the project, project-based learning teachers have two main purposes for the assignment. One, measuring the student's learning in, summative, in a summative way and evaluating the quality of the project so it can be even better than the next time. So this isn't about perfection, but progression and making sure the students progress and they're actually grasping the concepts and just really tuning in to what the students need to work on and how well they did on the project. So plan for a summative assessment. Objective, evidence, and activities. Objective, what will the students learn? That's what you're looking for with these projects. What are they gonna get out of this? Then evidence, what will they need to demonstrate to show that they learned this? <coughs> Excuse me and activities. What approaches might they take to go from not knowing to knowing? And these things all go together. When you have the vision, what's gonna get them there and how will they demonstrate that they learned it? And plan for formative assessments. Set milestones, milestones, little check-ins here and there. Plan check-ins with the individual or the whole group to see where they're at in their work and to keep them updated and make sure they're where they're supposed to be at the right time and look for progress. Look for the progress makers and keep your eyes open for ways to tap into and guide learning. So don't just let them go free, but make sure you see the progress that they're making and how can you tap into that and help them more. With assessment options and tools, use things like brainstorming, concept maps, and checklists to just keep to stay on track. And that is the basis of chapters three to five, those are some of the main points that I found when it came to project-based learning. I just want to thank you all for listening, and I hope you enjoyed the video.